Hello and welcome to the video for the friction experiment. This is a two-week experiment where you're going to be coming up with your own method to measure the coefficient of static and kinetic friction between an inclined plane and a, a series of three boxes with different surfaces. In order to perform this experiment, you need to understand a little bit of theory. So let's have a look at this. If I have an inclined plane, it's inclined at some angle theta, and I place a box on that plane, there's a number of forces acting on this box. Firstly, I've got the weight force, mg, which is acting vertically downwards. I've also got a normal reaction force between the plane and the box. So this acts upwards perpendicular to the plane. And finally, if this box is not moving, I've got a static friction force. So this is acting parallel to the plane in this direction. If the box was sliding, this would be a kinetic friction force. Now, when dealing with inclined plane problems, it helps to put all forces into their directions perpendicular or parallel to the plane. So we can break them into components. The normal reaction force is already perpendicular to the plane. The frictional force is already parallel to the plane. So it's just this weight force that we need to break into its relevant components. So we've got the weight force acting down here. We can draw it with one component acting parallel to the plane here and a component acting perpendicular to the plane here. Now you should show that this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta here. You can use some simple geometry to show that. And so if that's theta, we know that this side down the plane is given by mg sine theta and this side perpendicular to the plane is equal to mg cos theta. Now if the block is sitting stationary on the plane, we know that it's in equilibrium, which tells us that all forces are balanced. And moreover, all the perpendicular to the plane forces are balanced, and all the parallel to the plane forces are balanced. So we can make use of this. The coefficient of static friction is defined as the maximal possible frictional static frictional force is given by mu s n. So in order to find mu s, we need to know what n, the normal reaction force is, and what this st maximal static friction force is. Now n, you can work out by considering that in equilibrium, the forces perpendicular to the plane are balanced. So you can work out what n is. For the maximal frictional force, you can use that the forces parallel to the plane are balanced. So we know what the weight force parallel to the plane is, and you can use that to work out what is the maximal frictional force. So you'll need to come up with your own method in order to measure mu s, making use of some of this physics. In the second part of the experiment, you need to measure the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is given by the frictional force when the block is sliding, is given by mu k n. So mu k is what you're trying to find. n is the normal reaction force, which for this second part, you'll find that the force is perpendicular to the plane, still balanced because the block is not flying up off the plane or dropping through the plane. And so the perpendicular components are balanced, whereas in this case, there will be possibly some acceleration up or down the plane. So have a think about an appropriate method you could use to measure both mu s and mu k. Let's, I'll introduce you to some of the equipment you'll have available now. Okay, this is the equipment that you're going to have available to you for the experiment. You've got two boxes with plastic bottoms, a box with a felt bottom, a box with a cork bottom. You've got boxes which will fit in, sorry, masses which will fit inside these boxes. So you may want to put them in the box before putting the box on the cart, on the track. You've got the track 
with a retort stand, which allows you to adjust and change the angle of the track. You've got a protractor attached to the track, which will give you a rough estimate of the angle. If you want to get the angle more accurately, you can measure the height of the track with a ruler and the length of the track. You've got a pulley at the end of the track from which you can hang masses to apply a force. You've got a motion sensor as well with this Lab Pro interface. So I'm just going to give you a brief rundown on how to set up this Lab Pro interface. There's three things that the Lab Pro interface needs to work. Firstly, it needs power. So there's a connection here where you'll need to plug it into the power. It then needs to be able to talk to the computer. So you've got a USB cord here, which needs to be plugged into the end of the computer. And then you need to attach whichever sensors you're using with your Lab Pro interface. So you can place the sensor facing up the track and then to get it to detect da data you need to start the Logger Pro program from the bottom of the screen. So just start Logger Pro and this should then detect your sensor and bring up suitable graphs. To collect data you can just press the play button and that will tell me about the distance and speed of things as they move up and down the track. So pressing this A button will auto scale it and make it a bit clearer to see. How this motion sensor works is much like a bat. It sends out little pulses of sound, which sound like t -t 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 -t, and it measures how long it takes these pulses to return, giving it the distance of an object from it. So this means that if you're moving near the sensor, the sound may be reflected off you instead of off the object that you're trying to measure. So have a think about how you can use this equi equipment to firstly measure mu s, the coefficient of static friction, and then measure mu k, the coefficient of kinetic friction. Good luck planning your experiment.